We've got some big car news from several different sources today. Joining us to make sense of it all is Sam Abu El Samid from Navigant Research. Welcome, Sam. Hello again, Megan and Jason. Always a pleasure to join you guys. Uh, so I should say, if you're watching, uh, if you're just listening to this, um, if we refer to the squirrel, that is a squirrel that's sitting dangerously. Uh, it's perched dangerously in back of Sam. And in real life, it's actually there, just frozen in time. <laughs> yeah, it's uh, <laughs> uh, Sam's. Now I'm scared. Uh, squirrels are. Uh, after, after I st after I stole its uh, soul yesterday with my camera, it just stayed there and wouldn't move anymore. <laughs> That's what happens when you steal a squirrel's uh, soul, I, or so I've heard. I've never so, done that yeah, before. But, done it. Yeah. Uh, well, let's start with uh, the piece that you wrote for Forbes today, Sam. Delphi and Mobileye, two leaders in the robot car race, have announced a partnership to develop a self-driving system designed for automakers to integrate into their cars. Now, Mobileye and Delphi already have deals with automakers to supply elements for advanced driver assist systems. How is this partnership different? So what's going on here, uh, Delphi is one of the biggest, uh, what's known as tier one automotive suppliers. So they're, they're the companies that sell systems and components directly to the car makers. Um, and Mobileye, is, their focus is on uh, vision sensors. So they're the biggest supplier of the camera sensors that are used in cars for uh, lane departure warning systems, things like that, and uh, as well as um, they were... Uh, they're still used by Tesla as part of their autopilot system, but that's going to be going away in, their, in Tesla's next generation. Uh, recently, they announced that uh, Mobileye will no longer be supplying Tesla. So Mo uh, Mobileye and Delphi are collaborating to develop um, a turnkey autonomous driving package. Um, so most of the big car makers like uh, Mercedes-Benz and BMW, Volkswagen, GM, Ford, they're developing their own autonomous driving systems in-house. Um, but for some of the smaller car companies that don't necessarily have the resources to develop their own systems, um, they're going to look to suppliers like Delphi and Continental and Bosch and Denso to help them develop those systems. So what De uh, Delphi and Mobileye are doing is putting together a complete package with all the sensors, the control systems, and then all the car maker has to do is integrate the, the sensors into their cars. So we're not talking about those like aftermarket uh, systems that you would just add to your older car. No, this is this is going to be for new cars only. So they'll they'll only be selling this to car makers like perhaps Mazda uh, or Fiat Chrysler or um, you know maybe uh, Renault or, or uh, Peugeot in Europe. So some of the smaller manufacturers that aren't doing their own systems, uh, and that's the only way you'll get these is as part of a new car. So you mentioned the uh, breakup between Mobileye and Tesla. Um, that was shortly after the uh, fatal accident, um, and there was there were rumblings about how maybe Mobileye their sensors weren't good enough. Um, what what would you say the breakup was about? Uh, it's you know it's hard, it's hard to say for sure who broke up with who. Um, it sounds more like from what we've heard that uh, Mobileye broke up with Tesla because after the crash became public. Uh, Elon Musk came out very publicly and, and blamed Mobileye uh, for uh, for being the cause of the crash because their system didn't detect the truck. It wasn't able to distinguish this truck crossing the road in front of the Tesla that crashed into it. Um, and so, you know, that obviously didn't do Mobileye's reputation much good. And so Mobileye uh, apparently decided to stop selling systems to Tesla uh, going forward, you know, once their, their current contracts expire. But but was it the reason that it happened? I guess is the, the good question uh, well, there. I mean, it was, it was certainly part of the reason. Yeah. Uh, you know, I mean, obviously the the camera did not detect what you know that the truck was there, but neither did the radar sensor that Tesla was using. Oh, there you go. And you know, the Tesla's whole package that you know their control package that they developed also wasn't able to detect it. So you know, I mean, there's there's blame there's blame to go around for everybody. So I wouldn't I wouldn't entirely blame Mobileye for this one. Got it. So what, what are we to take about the, from this partnership? Is this good news for, will this speed up uh, autonomous cars? I think they gave a date of 2019, uh, which you know we've heard this summer, we've heard 2017, 2019. Uh, is this good news for those of us who uh, couldn't have a self-driving car fast enough? Yeah, well, uh, it's, it's about the same, it effectively is about the same timing as what most other manufacturers are saying because, um, 
what what Delphi and Mobileye announced this morning is that uh, they'll be doing public demonstrations of this system uh, next January at CES in Las Vegas, and then they're going to be doing on-the-road uh, field testing with it uh, beginning in 2017 and over the next couple of years as they develop the system and, and get it validated. And then by 2019, they plan to have it ready for manufacturers to start take for the car makers to start taking it and integrating it into their systems. So then it's going to be probably another two to three years after that before it actually goes on sale. Uh, so you're probably looking around 2021, 2022 timeframe before these systems are available. Um, most likely similar to what uh, Ford announced last week, um, you know, through car sharing services and ride hailing services, um, rather than being going on sale to the public at that time point. It's fine. If it, if I have to, uh, I don't need my own self-driving car. I just want to stop driving my own car as soon as possible. <laughs> so let's move on to Tesla. Today, Elon Musk announced a new Model S, the P100D, with ludicrous mode. This electric car has a <laughs> 0 to 60 miles per hour time of 2.5 seconds. Tesla also claims 315 mile range. Uh, what are your initial thoughts on this announcement? Well, certainly um, calling this ludicrous mode is probably the, mo the, the greatest example of truth in advertising of all time. Uh, <laughs> You know, going from 2.8 to 2.5 seconds for zero to 60, you know, I mean, if you're going under three seconds, who cares? I mean, it's not like you can ever drive that fast, you know, on legally on public roads anyway. I mean, it's only something you're ever going to do once in a while to show off to your friends. Um, so, you know, I, I don't, that doesn't really matter much. Um, the, 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 uh, the new battery pack is um, perhaps a little more interesting. Uh, what they're doing is they're using the same cells inside the battery pack that they have in their, their current in their current packs, the, the 90 kilowatt hour and the 75, uh, but they're just packing more of them in. Uh, and what they've done is they've made some changes because they have to pack in the cells more tightly within the, the case of the battery pack. Um, they had to make some changes for the cooling system and uh, to allow the coolant to flow through so the battery doesn't overheat. Um, but and then you know all, still fit it within the same overall size, so it'll fit in, so they can drop it into the same vehicles without changing the rest of the car. Um, so you know, for a mere twenty thousand uh, dollars, Leo can take his Model X back and have them swap in, you know, to get another ten kilowatt hours in his car. So that would be um, you're talking about kind of like a, a pay to unlock upgrade of sorts. It seems to be no. A, actually, this one will different? not. It's not uh, paid. On, it's not a software upgrade. Uh, for this one, they'll actually have to replace the battery pack completely, okay. uh, because they're they're still using the same cells and the 90 kilowatt hour pack that they have right now. They're using the full capacity of that, so there's nothing left to unlock in that one. Uh, so they will actually have to replace that battery pack with a new battery pack uh, that has more cells in it to give you that extra capacity. The the smaller one, the the 60 kilowatt hour uh, version that they sell. Uh, that one, it is the same pack as the 75 kilowatt hour version, and that one just has some of the capacity disabled in software. And that one you can do, you can pay for a software upgrade. But for the, to go from 90 to 100, you have to replace the pack. So you said uh, it's twenty thousand dollars for Leo, but if you haven't received your Model S yet, like me, probably right. because I haven't ordered it or paid for it yet, which is yeah, why that would, I haven't that, received that would be it. Right. Yeah, yeah exactly. uh, then it's only ten thousand dollars, right? Right. Yeah. So if you haven't if you haven't actually bought the car yet um, for a new purchase, um, you know, where it'll be coming from the factory with the bigger pack. And in that case, it's a ten thousand dollar upgrade. But if they have to replace your existing pack, it'll be twenty thousand dollars. OK, so there was something else in the press release that I, you need to explain to me. It says uh, so this is the Model S, not the big Model X, um, which is like a minivan. Don't call it a minivan, though. The, the <laughs> Model S, it says it will seat up to five adults and two children in this car that we're looking at here. The Model S, how does that work? Uh, the Model S, uh, you, there's an optional uh, set of pair of uh, rear jump seats. So they go in the back under the hatch. So I don't know. Uh, you guys probably aren't old enough to remember. No, back in the oh, I, I, those, I yeah. rode them in the New York City cabs. Oh, okay. <laughs> uh, well, uh, you know, old old school station wagons. They used to have those uh, rear facing jump seats for for little kids in the back, and that's what you can get as an option uh, in the Model S. So there's a pair of rear facing jump seats that you can get. So you normally have the five seats that are facing forwards, 
And uh, this reportedly was added uh, at Elon Musk's insistence um, when they were designing the car because he has five sons. And so he wanted to be able to take all his kids in the car. Uh, so that's why they added those uh, two extra rear seats as an option. Uh, so that's and that's been available on the Model S ever since it launched. That's that's not new. I've desperately been looking for a car that won't fit all my children so that I don't have to take all of Oops, them. Oops, I guess <laughs> I don't have to drive you around town. You need to go find uh, find a used Roadster. Yes. You need a Tesla Roadster because that <laughs> only do. has two seats. Excellent. I, I will start looking for that immediately. Or a Mini. Oh, wait, no. Yeah, no, the Mini, no, no. But that BMW <laughs> i3 only has four <laughs> seats. It's quite nice. Um, but, yeah. yeah, I do oh, have I them. love that. I love the rear-facing seats. Yeah. It's so cool. And, and they got full five-point harnesses, you know, so yeah. it's just like in a race car. Yeah, not back in the jump seats we used to sit in with nothing. Yeah, pretty much. <laughs> <laughs> you're sitting in the chair. What more safety right. do you need? Yeah, you were lucky we didn't put hey, you in the trunk. A lot, a lot of a lot of times, I, I mean, I can remember times, you know, when kids would ride in the back of a big station wagon when there were no seats back there. Mm -hmm. Yeah, exactly. Yep. Well, thank you so much for joining us, Sam. You can find Sam's work at Navigant Research. He's also on Twitter at Sam. I'll spell his last name for you. It's A-B-U-E-L-S-A-M-I-D. Thanks so much for joining us. Pleasure as always. Thank you, Sam. And Take bye care. to the squirrel. <laughs>